Hello everyone this is Tuba Mirza and welcome to Recoding All the code used inside this video are mentioned inside the description box So if you like the work we are doing and if you're learning something from our videos please do subscribe to our channel and share it with your group because your subscription will make this type of video happen in the future So without any further ado let's get started Core data relationship is one of the interesting topic for its users as it enables more variety of data saving and handling capabilities. Relationships helps to keep data organized easily and more understandable by developers. Creating relationship in core data is much more easier than developer thought and also more powerful as compared with other type of persistent storage techniques. Now let's take a look of some core concept which we are going to tackle in this video. Relationship. A relationship is a situation that exists between two relational database tables or entity when one table needs to connect data of the other table. Relationships allow relational databases to split and store data in different tables while linking disparate items. Relationships helps the developer to contact easily between tables and different databases and also keep the schema or entity of the database simple. One of the type of relationship which we cover in this video is one to one relationship. One to one relationship that refers to the relationship between two entities that is A and B in which one element of A may only be linked to one element of B and vice versa. For example, suppose we have two entity person and license, we can connect each other with one to one relationship. Because one person can only have a unique and one license, it's not possible to have two license for a single person. There are various examples in which we have to establish one to one relationship only when we have to connect to our one entity with other entity and have a unique data for each other. Talking about inverse relationship, an inverse relationship links an object back to any other object that refers to it in a defined to one relationship. Relationship definitions are unidirectional, so you must explicitly define a property in the object's model as an inverse relationship. By having inverse relationship, we can access the data from both the sides of entity and it is easy for a developer to get data from any fetch data but sometimes this might have disadvantages when we have to show exact data to user but our object also having some other data inside this extra data might become a cause for data leakage so developer should cautiously choose which entity have inverse relationship or not delete rules are also important for core data Having a good data delete rules helps developer to easily choose which data they want to delete along with relationship or don't want to delete from relationship and want to remove relationship between each other. Delete rules can be of four types. The first one is deny. If there is at least one object at the relationship destination, do not delete the source object. The second one is nullify. Remove the relationship between the objects but do not delete either object. The third one, cascade. Delete the objects at the destination of the relationship when you delete the source. The fourth one, no action. Do nothing to the object at the destination of the relationship. Developers should choose it as what they want to do with the data of the user. Now let's take a look of a final app. Inside the app, first we are able to add a person by tapping plus icon on toolbar. Then enter profile image. Add name of the person. Add date of birth of the person. And finally save the data. After the person have created, we can add the license of the person by tapping card icon on toolbar. Then inside the add license view, we choose where the person license belongs. Select the person. Finally add validation date of the license. Then save. 
So here we can see our data has been added. This data model consists of a person and license entity, which are connected using one-to-one -one relationship. So this is how our final app looks. Now before we go ahead, we highly recommend you all to watch some of our previous videos. Introduction to core data using Swift UI. New button customization style in Swift UI 3.0. Swift UI swipe action modifier using list. And using core data with model view and view model style. Recording is on Patreon and buy me a coffee. Make a small contribution or donations to help us grow our medium. We still offer free content on YouTube and other writing platforms. Also, don't worry, there are other ways to support us. Share us on Facebook, Twitter and other social media formats with your friends and ask them to subscribe. The links are inside the description box. So now, start with building our app. Create a Xcode project. Add project name. And make check mark on use code data. This will create a project with XE model class as well as persistence file and all things are connected to the view context. First, create some entity. Tap on add entity button. Then add attributes. Name which is type of string. Profile image which is type of binary data as storing image we need to save it as data. Then ID as UUID. And finally, date of birth as date. Create another entity named as license. Inside it, add attributes of ID as UUID. State as string. And valid date as date. Down below relationship section inside license entity add. License to person relation adding this type of name scheme helps to recognize which entity is connected with other entity. Inside destination select person entity. Now open person entity. And add relationship of person to license. Add destination of license entity. Also add inverse value of person to license. Inside graph style, we can see that we have established the relationship between both of the entity. Inside person entity, we have destination of license and not person itself as adding person to destination makes relationship to same entity itself. As it is not required this type of relationship, but you can do when you want to create folders and file structure in your project. Now here we can see our entity has established the relationship. Inside content view file, we remove some of the pre-filled codes. Create a Swift UI file as add person. Inside it require environment of managed object context as view context. Require another environment of dismiss. This will help to close the view when we dismiss function. Create some states. As person name as empty string. Person date of birth as current date function. Person image as UI image initializer. Create another state of image picker which is initially false. This will check for the sheet view. Inside body, 
Create navigation view. Inside it, add form. Then add navigation title modifier. Create another Swift file, name it as image picker view. Create a structure as image picker which confirms to UI view controller representable. Then add necessary function to make view and update view. Then create a class of coordinator which confirms to NS object, UI image picker controller delegate and UI navigation controller delegate. Then inside it, create a variable of parent which confirms to image picker view. Then create an initializer and require the parent which confirms to image picker view. This will send all the function and variables we have created inside the structure. Then we set the parent of class to the parent we have sent as initializer. Then inside the structure image picker, Create a function of make coordinator. Then provide our coordinator class the structure of self. Inside make UI view controller function, we create image picker constant which initialize the UI image picker controller. Then we allow editing to false. Add the source type to photo library. Then set the delegate of image picker to the coordinator. And finally return the image picker constant. Inside the coordinator class add function of image picker controller, which notifies the coordinator that user selected the image inside photo library. Inside it check that if it has returned the image to image constant which equals to info of image that we have converted the image as UI image. Inside the structure, we require the binding of selected image which confirms to UI image. And also create the environment of dismiss which will help to close the image picker when image is selected. Inside the image picker controller, if we select the image, we make it equal to the selected image. Finally perform dismiss. So finally our image picker has been completed. Inside the form add v stack. Then add image view inside it choose UI image format and add a person image variable. Then add some modifier to the image. Then below it, create a button which will open the sheet and toggle to the value of image picker. Below it, add sheet modifier and add variable image picker as binding. And inside the closure, we add image picker view and add the require binding image of person image which we have earlier created. Then below the VStack, create a text field to add person name and add binding of person name.
create another VStack. Add date picker. For the selection, we add binding of person date of birth variable. And add display components of only date. Below it, add button to save the data. For the action, it will perform dismiss function, which we get from environment property wrapper. For label, add text view of save and add respective modifier to make the button to take full view with. Then add some modifier to button also. Below it, create a function of save a person. Create a let of new person which equals to person entity and add the context as a view context. Then add the respective value like new person name equal to person name variable. Add id as uuid class. For profile image, we are able to use a person image variable and save it as png data or jpeg data. If we want in JPEG, we can also set the compression quality. Add date of birth, add person DOB variable. Then we try to save the data we have created using do cache block and print error if any. Inside the XC data model file, we need to save the profile image as an external storage which helps to save some extra data on database as image is going to save inside the internal files created by the app and not on the database. Inside content view, we create a fetch request. Add the sort descriptors. and animation as default. Then add variable as fetched person which conforms to fetched results of person entity. Then add sort descriptors of key path person, date of birth and inside ascending to true. Inside the for each, we put inside the fetch a person and for each person inside the fetch person, we are going to show some text. Inside the for each loop, add a v stack. Inside it, add h stack. Then we check the person. If not nil, then we show the image. Add some modifier of image. Then below it, create a V stack with alignment of leading. Inside it, it will show person name of empty string if value is nil. Then we check the person to license value is not nil. We'll create the view later after creating add license view. We show it as text and formatted it as date time and show only date. After that, we check if the value of person date of birth is not nil. Create a state for add person which initially is false. Below the list add toolbar. 
add a toolbar item group and add placement to navigation bar trailing. This method will help to use show more than one button on toolbar for iPhone devices. Inside it, create a button to add person which is toggle add person value. Then below the list, add modifier of sheet which has value get is presented value of add person as binding. Inside the closure, we add the add person view. Then inside the add person view, we add save person function inside the save button. Now run the app and add the person. Here we can see that we are able to add the data. Add the foreground color of the person date of birth to gray. And also add navigation title of the content view. Now create an another Swift UI view as add license. Similarly, require the view content and dismiss from environment. Then create some states. For selected state which has initial value as string. Then for selected person, we only create an empty person object. Another variable of data valid which equals to the date object. Then we create states array, add any state you want. Also, we need to require to make the fetch request which will fetch all person from database. So that we can make a picker and let people to select license for particular person. Inside the body, add navigation view and form view and add navigation title. Then create a picker view for selecting the state. Add binding of selected state. Inside it, create a for each block and pass the states variable. And we are going to show the text of each element inside the variable. Also, add the ID for self. Add picker style modifier of wheel. Create another picker for select person and add selection of selected person as binding. Then inside it, we are going to use for each to fetch person and we show the name of each person. Finally, create the date picker which helps to select the validity date. And create a save button and add button modifiers. Create a function to save the license.
create a let for new license which equals to license entity and add the view context inside it. Add the ID as UUID. Add valid date to date selected. State to selected state and finally add the license to person relation as selected person. Finally person save the data. Inside the entity, we add wrong type for a valid date attribute for license entity. We need to correct it as date not string. Inside the person picker, we need to empty string if the value is nil. Inside the content view, create a state of add license which equals to false. and add a new sheet modifier below the person sheet for add license view. Also add button of add license and toggle the add license variable. Inside the add license, we need to add dismiss function inside the save button. Now run the app. Here we can see that our app has crashed. This is because we make change in data type for our license entity. We need to delete the app then again run the simulator. We can tackle this issue using migration, but it's topic of another video. If you want video over migration, do let us know on the comment section. Now add person first and add license value. Select the state and select the person. We won't be able to confirm the choice of person selected. Open the add license view and add the ID to self. Now again run the simulator. Now add the license. Select the validity date and hit save. But we won't be able to see the details because we haven't added the text view so we need to create that. Open the content view and add the value of state inside the text. and validity date as text and show as formatted date time way. And now run the simulator. And here we can see that we are able to add data to another entity but show the relationship to a person entity. This is how we are using to connect one to one relationship. Now look how to delete the object from entity if having a relationship. Create a delete person function inside content view. It will take parameter of offset which confirms to index set. Inside the closure add with animation closure. Then for index inside offset. We pass the index inside fetch person array. And then delete the object. And save the context.
Then add the read modifier below the for each function. Here we can see that we are able to delete the data. Now open the XE data module. Here we can see that by default the delete rule is set nullify which only deletes the relationship between the two entity and delete a first entity from which we try to delete. To see the data inside the SQL app, we need to know the path where our data is saved. To do so, we need to open edit scheme from simulator above. Inside run section, add some argument as we type. Then close the window and run the simulator. And below the logger, we can see that our path has appeared. Now copy the path and open Finder and press Command Shift and G and paste the path and press Enter. Now if you download any SQL app, you will be able to open the file here. Or you can download any SQL app from App Store for free. So here we are easily able to see our person entity and license entity. We can see the inside license entity, we have one data which have null license to person column. This is what nullifies does as delete rule. Now create some more data in app. So here we can also see what nullifies does. Now set delete rule to cascade. And run simulator again. And delete the object. Here we can see it deletes reference from both license and person entity. Now select deny and add some data and make some relation. Here we can see that a data has been added. But as soon as we delete the data, it does nothing. It holds the data and no changes has been made inside the database. So this is how the lead tool works inside core data. We really hope that you liked watching this video. Please do let us know how you would love to use this feature inside your app below the comment section. And yes, let us know what you liked or disliked about this video in the comment section. Please do like and subscribe to our channel. And yes, do not forget to suggest some more topics. For now, I'll be signing off. We'll definitely see you all in the next video.